Welcome students. Today we will solve fourth problem on sectioning. Let us start today's lecture. We are given one object over here and we are asked to draw its full section front view. Now in full section front view we know we cut the object from its center line. It means if we want to draw full section front view of this object then we have to cut this object along this center line by using one cutting plane that will cut this object into two equal halves because this object is symmetric about this center line. And over here we are given this side as the front side of the object. So over here is the position of observer. Now after cutting this object along this center line by using one imaginary cutting plane, we will remove front half portion of this object and whatever we will left with at the back, we will draw orthographic image of the left out portion and that will be called as full section front view of this object. And we know whenever we have to draw sectioned front of any object, First of all, we should identify the front view of that object. So over here, the first step is we should first identify its front view. So let us see how many faces we have to represent in its front view. In its front view, we have to show two visible faces. This will be the first face and this will be the second face. Apart from these two faces in the front view, we have to show these two square holes also. And these two square holes are not visible from front, so we have to show these two hidden in its front view. So we have concluded that in its front view, we have to show two visible faces and two hidden pockets. So let us start with the drawing of this face first. Let us pick its left corner and let us mark that point on our paper and from that point we will sketch this length first. So let us first see how much is this length. The total length of the object is given to us as 180 millimeters, and this length is mentioned as 60 over here. It means this length is of 120 millimeters. So we will sketch a line of 120 millimeters on our paper. And we have reached up to this point. And from that point, we will sketch this height of 15 millimeters. So we will sketch a vertical line over here, which will be of 15 millimeters. Then from that point, we will draw a length of 60 millimeters. So from this point, we will sketch a length of 60 millimeters. So we have reached up to this point. From this point, we will sketch a vertical line of 60 millimeters again. So from here, we will sketch a vertical line of 60 millimeters. So we have reached to this point and from that point, we have to sketch this length of 60 millimeters again. So from this point, we will sketch that length of 60. And from that point, we have to draw this vertical line. So let us first see what will be the value of or the height of this vertical line. Over here, we have shown the height of this line as 15. And this distance is also 15. And total is 60. So 60 minus 30. So this will be 30 millimeters. So from this point, we will sketch a vertical line of 30 millimeters. So we have reached to this point and from this point, we will sketch this length. So let us see what will be the value of this length. Now total length of the object is 180 and this length is mentioned as 60 over here and this length is 60. So this will be 60. 180 minus 60 minus 60. So this will also be 60. 
So from this point, we will sketch a length of 16 millimeters. And from this point, we will draw a vertical line of 15 millimeters. So from here, draw a vertical line of 15. Then again, we have to sketch a length of 60 millimeters. From this point, we will sketch a length of 60 millimeters. Then we will connect these two points to get the drawing of this first face. Now after that, we have to sketch the drawing of second face. It is very easy. For this face, we have to connect these two points with the thick line. So this is face number two. So we have represented both the visible faces in the front view. Now we have to show these two pockets as hidden in this front view. Let us first see this pocket. Over here, its dimension is mentioned as 40 square through holes. So these holes are through and these are of 40 millimeters. So these are square holes of 40 millimeters. Now this length is 40 and length of this face is 60. So it is exactly in the center. So 60 minus 40, 20 divided by 2. So this distance is 10 and this distance is 10. So from this edge, we will measure 10 millimeters and we'll mark a point here. And from that point, we will sketch first edge of this pocket as hidden. Then we know length of this pocket is 40. So from this point, we will measure 40 millimeters and from that point we will sketch second dashed medium line for the hidden edge of that pocket. So we have represented this pocket over here. Now we will show this hidden pocket. It has same dimensions. It is also a pocket of 40 by 40. So this length is 40. This face has a length of 60. So 60 minus 40 divided by 2. So this is 10 and this is 10. Then from this edge, we will measure 10 millimeters and we'll mark a point. From that point, we will sketch dash medium line. And from this edge, we will measure 40 millimeters to draw the second dash medium line. Now we are ready with the front view of this object. Now we will convert this front view into full section front view. And in case of full section, we know we have to cut the object along its length. And before that, we will use one imaginary cutting plane. And we will remove front half portion of the object, which is in between observer and the cutting plane. Then whatever we will left at the back, we will draw orthographic image of same. So let us convert this front view into sectioned view. So first of all, we will see, is there any hollow portion in the object? Yes, there are two square holes in this object. Then we have to see, are those square holes cut by the cutting plane? Yes. This cutting plane cuts both the square holes and we know if we have opening in the object and if that opening is cut by the cutting plane, then those openings will be visible to us after the removal of front half portion of this object. So it means in this front view, first of all, we have to replace these dashed medium lines by continuous thick lines because these two openings will be visible to us in the section view. So from front, we will see this face and this face. And when we will cut this object from this section, its shape will remain same. At this section also, we will see this face and this face as well. But at this section, the material of this plate will merge with the material of other plate. But over here, we have to learn a very important point that this plate is a rib over here. In the previous lectures, we have learned that if we have a rib in an object and if we cut that rib during sectioning process, 
then we never merge a rib with other plates of the object and we never place sectional lines in the rib so when we will cut this object along this center line we will not merge this rib with the second plate we will keep it separate means we will not remove these edges we will not say that material of one plate will merge with material of other why because this is a rib we never merge a rib with other plates we keep it separate and in the rib area we never place sectional lines so it means we have concluded that overall shape will remain same but now we have to place section lines in this area in this area and in this area because this material this material over here and over here is cut by the cutting plane so in these three surfaces we will show section lines which represents the cut surface of the object and we know these section lines are parallel to each other inclined at 45 degrees to horizontal and equidistant lines and these lines are continuous thin lines so now you can see we are ready with the full section front view of this object now in the next part of this lecture we will draw full section front of this object along with its top view on the grid sheet welcome students in the previous part of this lecture we have learned about full section front view of this object now in this part of lecture we will draw its full section front view and top view in first angle of projection on the grid sheet so this object has a length of 180 mm so over here i have drawn a reference line of around 22 mm and we have to label capital x and capital y then if we are drawing this in first angle of projection so we have to label vertical plane above reference line and horizontal plane below reference line in gothic style now after this we will start with the section front of this object and over here we will directly draw its sectioned view so let us first draw this face and in order to draw this face let us pick this lower right corner and let us sketch this length of 60 mm first so from the reference line leave one row gap or minimum 10 mm gap align your scale and sketch a horizontal line of 60 mm it must be continuous thick now after this we will raise this corner by 60 mm through a vertical line so from this end we will draw thick vertical line of 60 mm then we will sketch this length of 60 so line your scale at this end in horizontal position and draw a length of 60 mm then we will sketch this vertical line which is of 30 mm so from this end we will draw a thick line of 30 mm then after that we will sketch this length of 60 mm so from this end we will align our scale in horizontal position and we will sketch a length of 60 mm then we will raise this end by 15 mm so from this point draw a vertical line of 15 mm measure it carefully from scale then we will construct this length of 120 mm so from this end align your scale carefully in horizontal position 
and sketch a length of 120 millimeters. Then after that, from this point, we will draw a vertical line of 30 millimeters. So from this point, we will draw a vertical line of 30 millimeters. Then from this point, we will sketch a length of 60 millimeters. So from this point, sketch a length of 60 millimeters. Measure it carefully from the scale. Then we will connect these two points and we will get the first phase. Now after that we will plot the second phase. For that we have to connect these two points with thick continuous line. Now we will show these pockets and we have to show these visible because we have cut the object from this center line and the length of this pocket is 40 and length of this face is 60 so 60 minus 40 so this is a length of 10 millimeters on both sides so from this edge measure 10 millimeters and mark a point similarly at the bottom measure 10 millimeters and mark a point then we will sketch a thick line vertical line by aligning the scale with respect to those two points. Then we know this pocket is of 40 millimeters. So from this edge, measure 40 millimeters, mark a point. Then at the bottom also measure 40 millimeters, mark a point. And draw a thick vertical line by aligning scale with respect to those two points. Same step we will do on the other side because this pocket has same dimension. So from this edge, we will measure 10 millimeters, we will mark a point here. Then at the bottom also measure 10 millimeters, mark a point. Then line your scale with respect to those two points and draw a thick vertical line. Then from this edge, measure 40 millimeters, mark a point. Then at the top also measure 40 millimeters, mark a point. Then connect those two points with the help of scale and draw a thick vertical line. Now you can see we are ready with the section review. We now have to place section lines in the cut area. So let us start from here. Let us line scale approximately at 45 degrees. Draw a continuous thin line. Then use these millimeter lines, place these millimeter lines on the previous line drawn by us and draw the second continuous thin line. So do this activity for the whole area in order to draw the section lines. And this activity is very important. It needs patience. So draw it carefully and with patience. And we know these section lines are continuous thin, parallel to each other and equidistant lines. So every time place the millimeter lines on the previous line drawn by you. Now you can see our scale has entered in the second area which we have to show section so draw line there also in the same setting so this will save time and uh, orientation will remain same Every time you have to place those millimeter lines on the previous line drawn by you. Then this will help us to maintain gap between every two lines, every two section lines. Gap will remain same throughout the view. 
and this step is very important so do it carefully you can see uh, that surface is away so if you have roller scale then you can roll carefully to the that surface and you can maintain same orientation if you don't have roller scale then uh, almost maintain same orientation with simple scale and follow same steps at the other end also So you can see we are ready with the sectioned front view of this object. Now after that we will align our scale with all the points of the section front and we will sketch continuous thin lines which are projectors in downward direction. These projectors must be parallel to each other, continuous thin and perpendicular to the reference line that you know very well. Now let us construct its top view. Now from top we will see these faces, this square shape face, second square shape face, then this rectangular face and that rectangular face and this inclined face, which will be a rectangular face from top of reduced length. And you can see if I uh, have to draw these three faces, this face, then middle face and this face you will find that these three faces are identical. These are actually square of 60, square of 60, square of 60. So their total boundary will be a length of 180 and a width of 60. So it means for these three faces, I can draw a box of 180 by 60. So let us leave one row gap from the reference line and between these two projectors, we will sketch thick horizontal line of 180 millimeters. Then from here draw width of 60 millimeters. Then again sketch a horizontal line of 180 millimeters. Then over here we will connect these two points to get that box of 180 by 60. Now if we have to show this face, you can see this face in the front over here. So from that corner we have already taken projector. So make that projector thick. So we have represented this face. Then this edge is over here in the front. So from this we have already taken projector. So make that projector thick. Now you can see we have represented those three squares. These three squares. Now let us draw its a center line. So total width is 60. So at 30 millimeters, we will draw the center line because object is symmetric about horizontal center line. So construct a chain thin line. 
so over here i am showing it thick so that it should be visible to you in the video but you will draw it thin so it is a chain of long and short dashes long dash is of 10 mm short dash is of 1 mm and gap between these long and short dashes is 1 mm now after that we will draw this plate its width is 15 so from center line we will measure 7.5 on both sides 7.5 marker point then 7.5 marker point so same step we will do here 7.5 marker point and on the other side of the center line also 7.5 marker point then line your scale with these two points carefully and sketch a thick horizontal line similarly line your scale with these two points and sketch a horizontal line so we have represented that face now let us represent these openings and uh, we have already taken projectors from these openings from the top so use these projectors and we know it is a square of 40 so from back end leave 10 millimeters leave 10 millimeters and draw a horizontal line then use these projectors draw width of 40 then over here length of 40 then we will connect these two points similarly use these two projectors so from back leave 10 millimeters and draw a horizontal line then draw a width of 40 on this projector similarly over here width of 40 on this projector and connect these two points so we are ready with the top view also after this we will convert this center line into cutting plane line so for that we have to make the last dash and the first dash which is the long dash of the center line into thick dash then on these two dashes we will show arrowheads so this length is of around 10 millimeters show arrowhead of 3 ratio 1 so this side as well show a line of 10 millimeters and draw arrowhead of 3 ratio 1 so we are ready with the section front view and top view of this object now let us place dimensions so let us start with the length dimension so leave one meter gap continuous thin line over here also leave one meter gap continuous thin line and draw a dimension line and show close fill arrowheads at both ends of the dimension line in 3 ratio 1 and let us represent in gothic style 180 millimeters so i don't have space at the bottom so i can accommodate only one dimension over here then after this let us place these length dimensions at the front view because at the bottom i don't have space so leave one meter gap continuous thin line over here one millimeter gap continuous thin line then from this pocket one millimeter gap continuous thin line then from this edge then over here we will place two dimensions this is 60 and this is 40 millimeters so let us place closed field arrowheads at both ends of these dimension lines and gothic style we will mention this as 60 and this as 40 after that we will place similar dimensions at this end one meter gap continuous thin line 
from here one millimeter gap continuous thin line then from this edge also one millimeter gap continuous thin line and draw from this edge one millimeter gap continuous thin line then leave around 10 millimeter gap draw dimension line then from this dimension line again leave a gap of 10 millimeters prox and we will add close filler words and we will write over here 60 in gothic style and this is 40 now let us place width dimensions so that we can place here 1 meter gap continuous thin line over here 1 meter gap continuous thin line width is 60 and this width of the pocket is 40 from the view leave one meter gap continuous thin line so from the view leave one meter gap continuous thin line then leave one meter gap continuous thin line so place a dimension line over here you can see gap between arrowhead and the dimension line and between these two dimension line is approximately same that is 10 millimeters add close field arrowheads and over here we will label 40 millimeters now let us place height dimensions so one millimeter gap continuous thin line one millimeter gap continuous thin line so over here we can place dimension dimension line Place close field arrowheads and we will write this as 60 in gothic style. After that, we have to represent these two heights so that we can place here 1 millimeter gap continuous thin line this side. From here, 1 millimeter gap continuous thin line this side. Over here, we can draw a common dimension line, chain dimensioning show separate arrowheads for these two dimension lines and over here we can show that this is of 15 millimeters and this is also of 15 millimeters now we have to place this dimension height dimension so one meter gap continuous thin line one meter gap continuous thin line dimension line so over here we will place 30 in gothic style so we have placed all the height dimensions now this width dimension left so that you can place outside over here so let us place continuous thin line from this point draw continuous thin line and over here we can place it as 15 millimeters so you can see we have placed all the dimensions and we are ready with our answer i hope uh, this answer is clear to you thank you very much